Boil over. For how long can you store yeast? Well, I don't know the exact answer to this. I usually answer for a very long time, but can you store yeast indefinitely? Well, that's gonna be a very hard experiment to try, but as this is like a frequently asked question, I thought it was time to do some experiment with it. So today we're gonna try to make starters from yeast that has been sitting along for quite some time in my yeast fridge. This yeast is about 15 months old and to really make this a good experiment we're going to try with two different yeast that is about the same age and we're going to do starters and ain't going to do something fancy with it like a ramp up something like that we're just going to find out how 15 months old yeast handle a normal starter a normal starter for me is like two liters and yeah that might be a little bit bigger than most but Hey, it's my channel, so it's my experiment. At the end of this video, I also want to announce a great upgrade to the Dr. Hans recipe book, which is accessible for my patrons, so stick along for that also. But now, let's dig into the experiment. Okay, making double starters today doing some experiments. So, obviously I already told you, this is Honedalk, right? Uh, got this from Espen over at Ölti. If you haven't checked out Espen, and if you understand Norwegian, do check him out. Don't know what's on top of this one. Hopefully it is uh, nice is. Hopefully it's beer, it's carbonated. And I uh, have had this for over a year, not used it, with boiling. I'm gonna shake that up. Obviously, sorry, I have need to taste this first. Yeah, this cider ish. Tastes good. So, we're gonna use it. It is at least a year. No, it's much more. It, this is at least. Oh! Ah! Boil over! Massive boil over! Damn it! Always watch your starters as well. Okay, so we tasted it. Why am I screaming? It tastes fine. In goes the yeast. So that could be like one and a half year old yeast. But it is at least, let me count. I have had it for 15 months at least. So it is probably like one and a half years old. But say 50 months. Let I know. Let's see if it works. Okay, the second one. Uh, this I will check also. This is 15 month old yeast. So, and this is the WLP644. And the last time I used this was for my. 1k subs competition. I did a low ABV hoppy beer to uh, Cheshire Homebrew, David. So we have over pressure, small amount of yeast down there. I will link to my story with you and I will link to uh, the the video, the uh, brewing video. Nice. Nice looking beer. So, we're gonna taste it before we pitch it. But it uh, looks nice. Yeah, tastes alright. Mm. Mm. Nice. 
Nice. Okay, let's shake this up. And pitch it. You know what? I do get this question a lot. I'm working on a frequently asked question on my website also. I'm going to check that out. That would be a ongoing work. Of course, I would like to blog about everything and make videos about everything, but that's hard. Okay, so uh, this goes on my second stir plate. Yes, I have two. I do prefer the big one. This is gonna boil over, or boil over, ferment over. Okay, both of them are going side by side. As you see, much greater headspace than the big one. If you're getting one, get the big one. This is a very powerful. I made this myself. This I bought. It's very cheap. It's working. And uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm not going to complain about it. But it doesn't have a light. I really. <laughs> of course, if you should build one, you should build lights in everything. Everything you should like flicker, or light up, sound. Yeah. Be like a Polish disco. Sorry. Okay, this is 12 hours of the pitch. How about that for 15 months old yeast? So, looking healthy. But of course, we need to taste the, the starters. But looking good. This is 24 hours of the pitch. And uh, yeah, the quike is it's done. Th that, that's quike for you. And uh, the WLP644 is going strong. But the quike, yeah. But I'm gonna let it go for a little longer. Now it's like 48 hours and they are both done but yeah it's also quite hot in here in the brew shed almost like 30 degrees so but uh, yeah the quike was super fast so i'm gonna harvest from them now and then i'm gonna cold crush them i have videos on like more of the making a starter and harvesting so uh I'll put a link down below in the description for that. Okay, it's time to taste the uh, Hornet on starter. Like somewhere 15 months old, maybe yeast, at least. For example, then with just need just need a little bit left there to stir up the uh, the yeast look at all of that yeast seems to be a quite flocculent yeast okay let's give this a nose Smells like a starter. Cheers. Yeah. Mm? Clean starter. Yeah, nice. So, can't taste anything off with it. Always taste the starter. This is what can save your beer from going bad. And this determines if it's okay to continue to reusing this yeast or not. And yeah, it is. Let's taste the other one. This is the WLP644. And this I know is more than 15 months old yeast. For example, this has been cold crashing. And I'm gonna pour off. Decant, but don't need all of it. We need to leave a little on top of the yeast, store up the yeast wheel, let it taste it. No, it's not off. It's 
Tastes like a starter. Clean, fermented, dry. Okay, so the yeast is good to brew with. I'm brewing now. So it's also good to reuse because I harvested from this starter. So maybe in 15 months, I will reuse it again. I have a dedicated video about my yeast in the yeast fridge, how I store my yeast. So go and look at that one. Cheers. Woo. Okay, so back for the conclusion. So 15 months old yeast handles a two liter starter without any issues. Awesome. You want me to do the experiment with older yeast than that? Comment down below. I hope that answered some questions about how long you can store yeast. Of course, this ain't the exact number. We're never gonna get that and it's gonna be different all the time. But uh, yeah, I did two different yeast strains. So ah, I'm quite pleased with the uh, experiment and the result. The WLP644 starter went into the acidulated soured pineapple IPA. Yeah, I'm gonna put a link to that video also. So the news for the patrons is that I have this big, yeah, it's beer. I have this big Dr. Hans recipe book, which, uh, yeah, well over 110 recipes now. I got this amazing suggestion from one of my viewers. Hey doctor, couldn't you also start to share your beer recipes in the XML format? Hmm. Yes, of course I could. So from now, all of my recipe that goes up into the recipe book will also go up in the beer XML format. We, we still have the like, type it recipe, but also in the beer XML format, which means that you can open the recipe directly up in your brewing software. Awesome. And I'm also gonna try to fill in as many as possible of the already published recipes in the recipe book up to beer XML. And that's gonna take some time and I don't know how many, but I started with some today and I'm gonna see how, how many is possible. Yeah, but so that's a good upgrade. Also, if you want to sneak a copy of my ebook with three of my top recipes in a beautiful format, head over to the drhansbrewery.com website, sign up on my mailing list. You will get the ebook for free. Awesome. If you try to brew something from it, please let me know. And of course, if you're interested in anything I use, you have my Amazon storefront page to check out. Yeah. There's uh, links all over the place. So many links. Okay, guys. Cheers and thanks for watching. Remember, I do these experiments so you don't have to. So subscribe to the channel. Please give this video a like. And yeah, share, ring the bell. And yeah, yeah signing out. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out. <laughs>